Assessment is often an integral and essential part of the process of education. In many cases, the outcomes of assessment establishes the success or failure of the process of education. So although assessment um, helps us in the evaluation of the educational process, uh, assessment is so important that it often shapes the process of education itself. Therefore, it is important that we need to understand the concept of assessment and especially the quality of the assessment process in the process of education. So what are the characteristics of educational assessment? This is something that we'll briefly um, discuss here. So first of all, um, as I said in the very beginning, assessment is an integral part of the process of education. And educational assessment is basically a systematic way of measurement of analysis and of evaluation of the educational processes, the outcomes of education, and the outcomes of education for students in the form of the knowledge that they get as a process, uh, as a result of the process of education, the skills that they are required to get, the attitudes and the beliefs. So when we systematically measure educational outcomes in the form of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and beliefs of the learners, we call that assessment. Now, um, the aims of assessment are generally twofold. First, um, the formative assessment um, is aimed at generally improving the, the process of education and locating possible loopholes or, or possible issues or drawbacks in the process of education. So formative assessment happens uh, throughout the process of education and generally teachers or educators or educational institutions need to conduct the process of formative uh, assessment in order to see uh, whether the teaching learning process is effective, whether the pedagogy that teachers use is effective, and whether students are learning and they're making good progress. Uh, on the other hand, the concept of summative assessment is basically based on the idea of measurement and evaluation of the educational outcomes or the you can say the end product for learners. So the end product is uh, in either in the form of the qualifications or certification or awards that the students get at the end of the uh, educational process. So generally the formative, the aim of the formative assessment is to uh, see whether students have achieved uh, what they are required to achieve and uh, should they be then certified for that or awarded qualifications based on their performance in the summative assessment or the overall uh, end uh, uh, part assessment. Now, what are the characteristics of good quality as um, uh, educational assessment processes? So first of all, uh, the educational assessment that has good quality will have clear aims. In other words, why is it that students are being assessed? What are they being assessed for? And in what ways are they being assessed? So the um, a good quality assessment, educational assessment, will have clear aims. Um, and so when the teachers or the, the, the paper setters or those who conduct exams uh, will clearly know what are the aims of the tests, what are the aims of the contents of the tests or the papers that they are preparing for or conducting. So clear aims is the first characteristics of good quality assessment. Secondly, the content of the assessment should be relevant to, in two ways. First, relevant to the course content. Um, and secondly, it should be relevant in terms of measuring the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that it aims to measure. So 
the relevance of the content of the assessment process uh, and structures is, is very important. In many cases, uh, it happens that the content is not relevant to the kind of, uh, of knowledge, skills, and attitudes that the examiners or the educators want to measure. And so that makes it low quality or bad quality assessment. Thirdly, the structure, presentation, and language of the assessment processes and the, for example, the uh, assessment papers uh, or the exam structures and patterns, uh, that should be something uh, that should be good quality. In, in many cases, the structure is not good. In some cases, the presentation of the assessment tools is not good. In some cases, the language used in assessment tools is not good. So ensuring the quality of the structure, presentation, and language of the assessment processes and the assessment tools, such as the exam papers, is extremely important. Time and conduct. Again, um, every assessment uh, and every assessment tool should have suitable time and duration. And the process of conduct of the assessment uh, is also very important. Generally, it should be uh, conducted in a suitable, peaceful environment that is well facilitated for the kind of assessment that uh, is the aim of that examination or evaluation process. So the time and conduct uh, of assessment uh, should be suitable. Uh, then the level, mental cognitive level, uh, the, uh, the assessment processes, the assessment structures, the assessment tools should be in line with the level of, the, uh, of those being assessed, that is the learners. It should be in line with their mental abilities and it should be in line with their cognitive levels. Now, the other characteristics, the more, um, you can say, technical characteristics of uh, quality assessment processes or quality educational assessment include validity, which actually means that the assessment process or test or tool, whatever we call it, or the paper, it should measure what it claims to measure. For example, if a, a part of the assessment is aimed at measuring the uh, the critical thinking of students, or maybe the, the composition writing abilities of students. But the questions that are given, or the content that is given in the, in the assessment tool or in the paper, is something that instead measures memory uh, rather than, um, or the capacity or the capability of students to memorize things rather than their cognitive skills or their composition writing skills. Um, that is something that will make that test invalid. So validity is very important. We need to know that uh, what we are actually measuring and so the content uh, and structure of the test or the, the measurement tool should be in line with what we want it to actually measure. Secondly, reliability. Reliability actually means that the tests or the assessment process measures what it claims to measure consistently. So it's not uh, cons consistently across time and in different situations. Uh, so the more there is this reliability where the result of the test um, is, uh, is similar to the results of the tests uh, that, uh, that is conducted on, on, a, on a previous occasion, or on other occasions or in different situations that will make it more reliable. So every time when the test is conducted, the result is quite similar. That makes it more reliable. Next, authenticity. Authenticity actually means that our tests or our assessment processes and tools reflect real life situations. In other words, the aim of the test is to actually measure the authentic learning of the students. Um, and uh, so the students can relate, uh, or the learners can relate, the questions to their re real life and the answers that come actually reflect their real life and their authentic learning, rather than 
uh, focusing on, let's say, something that they don't understand or something that is inauthentic. Next, fairness is very important. Uh, fairness in the sense that all learners should be given opportunities in the assessment process to indicate their expertise and to in indicate uh, and to show their knowledge, skills, and, uh, and aptitudes. Um, as we know that there is a concept of uh, multiple intelligences. Um, and so um, measuring all students um, in the same way uh, is something that sometimes stands in the way of fairness of the assessment. Therefore, the assessment uh, tools and processes should be, uh, should be structured uh, based on keeping in view the multiple uh, abilities and skills of students and especially keeping in view the idea of multiple intelligences or variety of abilities of the students or the learners. Next, variety. This is something that is, um, um, you can say, linked to the previous one. Uh, a variety of assessment processes, as we know that, uh, if we are using the same type of assessment for all students, the result generally will not be uh, very just. And so the process will also not be very just. Therefore, there should be a variety of assessment processes. Some students will be better being assessed, uh, assessed through, for example, written tests. Other students might do better in terms of oral tests uh, or oral assessments. There could be other students or other learners uh, who could do uh, uh, better when they are asked to do certain things in practical sense or to, do, to, to act on certain things. So there should generally be a variety of assessments the, because the aim is not to assess students but actually to, um, to dig out their potential and their learning uh, during the educational process. Next, feedback is an essential part of good quality educational assessment. So educational assessment, especially the formative uh, form of assessment, is something that aims at giving feedback to the students and also to the teachers in order to improve the teaching learning process. So feedback is quite essential, uh, and quality educational assessment should have a feedback system. Next, formative and summative assessment both quality education assessment will have uh, elements of both. There, sh there, there should be uh, processes of formative assessment or assessment throughout the uh, educational process and summative assessment that happens towards the end of the educational process. And lastly, very importantly, assessment, remember, should be a means to an end. It should not be an end in itself. In many cases, um, uh, uh, the, the assessment process is given so importance or uh, it is emphasized so much that it becomes the center of everything. So the whole educational process revolves around the process of assessment. So the teacher te teach according to test and the student prepare according to test. So if the tests or the assessments um, are, for example, based on uh, raw learning or they require students to memorize things instead of um, measuring their real cognitive abilities and their understanding, their critical thinking, then the whole educational process will revolve around that. So it is therefore important that although assessment is an essential and very important aspect of the educational process, it should not be uh, the uh, the, 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 the central or the pivotal point around which the whole education process revolves. In some cases, it turns the examinations into something like um, a nightmare for students, and so they develop exam phobia. Therefore, it is important to remember that assessments or examinations should be consider, considered as means to an end um, and not an end in themselves. So these are some of the important uh, qualities uh, that could make the quality of educational, the, the educational assessment process and tools, quality educational processes and